Hey everybody, my name is Hudson Trenum and uh, it's been a few years since I've been involved with uh, Malagash, either on the board level or on a speaker level, but I just want you to know it is my delight to bring a devotion for you today. I'm so excited for you guys. Camp has meant so much to me and certainly to my family over the years. Uh, some lifelong relationships there and lots of blessing from the Lord. Uh, as we get going today, I don't want to delay any more. I want to share a little bit with you uh, from the scriptures. This is from Matthew chapter 21. Jesus has just arrived in town. Uh, he has been letting everybody know in his own dramatic fashion, I am the one that God has sent for you. And so uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 12, it says that the first thing he does is he makes his way to the temple when he gets into town. And this is what happens. Jesus entered the temple area and he drove out all the people who were buying and selling there. He turned over the tables of the money changers and the benches of people who were selling doves. It's written, he said to them, that my house will be called a house of prayer, but you're making it a den of robbers. And I'm just gonna pause there for a second. Jesus arrives on the scene, and this is the court of the Gentiles. This is the only place where if you are not a Jewish person, but you believe and trust and love this God that they love, this is the only place where you can come into the temple and worship him. And so they've come to worship. They've come to meet. They've come to see God. They want to pour out their hearts. They want forgiveness for sins. They want guidance for their lives and what's going on. They want a blessing. They want healing. And what they get instead is people selling animals. Animals making all the loud noises around them. People asking for money, people exchanging money, people trying to wheel and deal and bargain. This is what they get. So they've come to meet God, but instead there are all these walls set up so that they can't actually meet God. And Jesus arrives on the scene and he's so upset by this, he just clears the space. Turning over tables, getting rid of the people who are buying and selling. And then, what does he do? He takes his seat. And as he takes a seat there, people who have come and who are seeking a healing come forward. People who are blind have their sight restored. And people who can't walk or who have mobility issues, they're healed too. And it makes it sound like in this passage that everybody who came for healing was given that opportunity to be healed that day. Friends, it's hard for us when we don't have that experience of the Jewish temple. We don't know what it was like. We didn't live through all of that. We didn't have that experience. And it's so far removed from what we experience in our own lives today. But there's something just as true for us today as it was back then. Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within you. And Paul, uh, later on in the New Testament, says, don't you know that the Holy Spirit lives within you? Our house, our body, is to be called a house of prayer. And this is a place where we should be coming to God and absolutely connecting with him. We don't have to be a physical place in particular because the kingdom of God is always with us. And you know what? Just as though it was so distracting back in Jesus' day with the people and their money and their animals and all of that, today we can be just as distracting in our own lives and in our own worlds for the people around us. People want to come and in the presence of us should be able to meet God and yet somehow in the presence of us, they encounter 
me the jokester, me the person who likes to keep things light and easy and fun. Or they, they want to meet God, they want to be healed, and yet when they come all they hear about are my stories and my greatness and how much I can tell them about, oh, you know, I've always got a story that, you know, that, that outdoes somebody else. Um, there's so much attention drawn to me in that. And yet the attention should be where people want it to be, knowing Christ hears them, knowing God hears them and has something to say to them. And sometimes people come and what they meet in me is all of my rules and all of my boxed life, how I've got everything structured. I've got a schedule. Sorry, I'm too busy. I, you know, maybe we can work something out later. Or maybe it's something else. Maybe it's just that, uh, you know, oh, I can't have people over. My, you know, my house isn't in good shape or I'm embarrassed about my family. Whatever it is, we have to have our life kind of set perfectly. But Jesus speaks against the religious leaders who said that people, they were saying people need to have it all together. When people come and meet with me, can they engage God? Is my life, is my house a house of prayer for them? I want to finish with a little story. Uh, this is a story about uh, uh, a fellow who lived uh, a few decades ago. And what he said was, don't you think that the way we engage God so often is just like we were like when we were kids? And we'd go up to somebody's house, we'd ring the doorbell, and we'd run, you know? And then we'd watch from behind the bushes, or we'd listen around the corner. Uh, we'd hide, in, hide behind a tree or something, and uh, or down at the edge of their deck or something. And they would come out, and they would look around for whoever rang the bell, and they wouldn't see anybody, and they'd go back in, and everybody who was part of that group would just laugh. And sometimes you'd go to multiple houses. Sometimes you'd do all your friends. Sometimes you'd do complete strangers' houses. But honestly, isn't that how we often do treat our prayer life? We kind of run up to God. We, we ring the doorbell, which basically is us saying something really quick. God, I pray that you'll help me. I pray that you'll give me. I pray that you'll show me. Lord, I need. Lord, I, you know, I'm desperate. And, and we'll pray, and we'll pray for 15 seconds sometimes, sometimes a little longer. Sometimes we don't really say too much, but we're just kind of scratching our head and saying, I don't really know what to say, but I hope you're there and I hope you're listening. And then we run and we get, it's like when we're running away from that house, we're just running to what's next on our list of things to do. And um, the, the next thing to think about, Whereas the truth is, if we would just ring that doorbell and we'd wait for God to answer, if we'd remain in his presence, even if we encountered God, he answers the door and we don't know what to say. and We don't even know what we're trying to get off our chest. We don't even know if God will forgive us. We're distracted. We start to talk to God and then we're thinking about uh you know, something our friend said to us. Uh, we're trying to talk to God and then we're thinking about what somebody did to us or what we did to someone else. We're thinking about a test that we have coming up. We're thinking about a job and whether, we've, whether we're gonna get it. We think about everything. We're thinking about our favorite sports teams. But honestly, God doesn't want us to, God's not saying feel guilty about that. God's just saying, leave it. When you think about it, just leave it come back and bring your distracted mind back to me. As we do that, as we come back and kind of shuffle in front of God and kind of wonder, what do we say? What do we do? Uh, you know, how does this work? Even as we do that, the first time we might go away feeling really disjointed and really upset about how it all went. We might think that we didn't hear God at all and that God probably didn't hear a prayer like that either. But the truth is, is that when we do it again, we'll shuffle a little less probably next time. We might be more distracted that time, but the more we continue to give that over to God and just come back and ask him again and again and seek him, you cannot continue to seek God and seek him with a pure heart 
and nevertheless not hear him. He is there for you. Just stick around. Don't blurt out your prayer and run. But come and experience him and see his character. And you'll have the answers for your prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and we thank you that you are patient with us despite everything. Uh, be with us this day. Guide us that we might not be a wall for other people to come to know you, but that we might be the one who welcomes them in and that our lives would be a house of prayer.